pupa and cocoons. Let's talk about the care of pupa and cocoons. First of all, um, how you should treat a moth pupa or cocoon, it really depends on the species because in some cases it will not even emerge if you don't treat it right. So first of all what you will do is study the life cycle of the species you are breeding in nature. The natural situation. How do they live? And try and emulate it. This is the most important thing. You know, some species will not even emerge if you do not let them overwinter. Some species require a cold winter. And without, any, without a prolonged period of cold, they will not even emerge. Looking at here is my box of overwintering cocoons. And I have some really exciting projects and, uh, and some really cool species for this year to breed. Now all these cocoons you're looking at right now are overwintering and uh, they will emerge if I warm them up. But currently I've kept them cold in my basement which is actually too cold for most of them to emerge although we had a quite warm, uh, warm winter which caused some of the species to emerge too early. I'll show them. Here are some of the emergences. Um, well, they are spring species, as you can see. Some Saturnids and a Sphingid. I'll show you them briefly. You can stick them in the fridge or you can put them outside. You know, some cocoons will even uh, survive minus 20 degrees Celsius. Like, for example, in Canada, you have some silk moths uh, which occur even very northward and they survive harsh cold. They need this cold to overwinter. And other species do not. It sounds very obvious, but you, you, have, to, you have to take this into account, you know. Second of all, the humidity is an important factor. Cocoons and pupa can be very prone to desiccation, especially in houses, in captive conditions, because our houses tend to be drier than the air in nature, so they tend to desiccate. So it's probably a good idea to spray them a few times per week, but not too much, because spraying them too much can cause things like mold, fungus, or mites. It's just, you know, these, pu these pupa, they can't absorb the water you spray on them. It only prevents them from drying out. So, now I usually place them within one very big cage or rearing container, what's very important is that the moth or butterfly can climb up to a high point where it can inflate the wings. These creatures they need to hang, they need to hang when they uh, are inflating their wings, which is the first thing they'll do when they emerge. They will pump their body fluid through their body and the pressure will pump up their wings, through their wing veins. So put them in a cage, but don't put them in a plastic container don't put them into a container with slippery walls because the creature won't be able to climb up, fall down and become crippled. This often happens with beginners. Just buy a nice cage made from netting, whatever. You know, when I used to be very young and I used to be a newbie, I improvised my own breeding cage uh, by using a cardboard box and the walls were covered with paper towel and it worked. Yes, that's right. It works. It's a crude idea, but it works. As long as they can climb up, they need a surface with a good grip. Adults. Adults of butterflies and moth. Guys, these can be very complicated. Because there are so many species and so many families with different lifestyles. This is incredible. So, if we are talking about insects that I breed, me, this guy, they are usually silk moths and these silk moths they only live for about one or two weeks and they, can eat, they cannot even eat because they have no functioning mouth this is also the reason they will only live for one or two weeks they are literally forced to starve because they cannot eat and all they will do is quickly pair, lay eggs and die now this sounds very easy but still it can be very hard to get them to pair in captivity so let's talk about non-feeding moths like silk moths, 
uh, some kinds of hog moth, just the very basic species. What do they need? First of all, um, a very good kind of container for them is a cage or something made from netting. It allows them to, uh, they need a certain degree of freedom to fly, but not too much. Uh, for example, these rearing cages I'll show you are very nice and useful. Now, what's very useful for rearing both caterpillars and adults is this thing called a pop-up cage. Whoop! It's called a pop-up cage for a reason. It's one of the best things to keep adults in. So, <clears throat> let me demonstrate it to you. It's basically a cage you can fold open. And it opens up like this. They're very practical and easy and they have a zipper you can use to close them with. And I put them outside at night in summer and in winter I keep them uh, in front of an open window for proper ventilation. And these, these nice little things have resulted in many pairings for me, but I also rear my caterpillars in them. I'll provide you a link in the comments that shows where you can ob obtain them. But all you have to do is Google pop-up cage. Or alternatively you can um, search for a, an insect cage. But most commonly they're called a pop-up cage. You can buy those everywhere, everywhere online, but if you are creative, you can make your own. You don't need to buy them, though it's essential for them to have a little bit of airflow. Uh, why? Why is airflow so essential? Well, moths, they tend to find each other by smell. That's right. They secrete pheromones, and the male will smell the location of the female and track her down and pair with her. However, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to, find, to find a female based on smell only if there is no airflow. Because these molecules, these pheromones, they will, they will go with the wind and, and based on where they are coming from, the source, um, that's how the males find them, you know. They, lo they look for the source, they smell where it's coming from. Now, if you put them in a room with no ventilation, these pheromones will go everywhere and they fill, will fill the room. They will fill the entire room with the smell of a female. And this will make the male go crazy because he will smell the pheromone everywhere, but he will have no clue where it's coming from. Uh, for example, um, well, try thinking of a hot dog stand, you know. And if it's, if it's windy outside and the wind is blowing through, the, through a street, everybody down the street will smell the hot dogs and, and they will know where it's coming from. But, um, you know, if there's no dispersal of the smell, just all the streets will be filled with the hot dog smell and nobody will know the source. I know it's a very strange analogy. I hope you will understand. Here's a very crude paint drawing to show you how moths um, find their partner. So what I do is I put my cages outside or in front of an open window. This is the best way to get pairings. And if they really refuse to pair, there's another method called hand pairing. Yes guys, that's right. You can pair these moths by hand. This takes a little bit of knowledge and experience. And you have to know exactly how to do it. I know it can be discouraging, it can be very hard. I've hand paired many species, uh, even uh, agar moths, even, uh, I've never paired hog moths, it doesn't seem to work for them, so it depends on the species or the family. Now for butterflies or feeding types of moths, this is quite different, because uh, they also need to be fed. Now, most butterflies and moths have a proboscis or a tongue, they used to suck up liquids. This means their food will have to come in liquid form. One of the best things to feed them is a solution of honey and water or sugar and water because, well, basically they need sugar. That's their main source of food is uh, sugary, sugary liquids, basically. 
No, not energy drinks, guys. But honey and water is perfectly fine uh, as a solution. Now, I usually put it in bottle caps or caps of uh, jam jars. And I usually soak it up on cotton or in paper towel. And it will attract the adults, which will... Hi everyone, currently I am feeding my butterflies, my Eumaeus minias. You can also feed them by hand by putting the proboscis in the container. So we went through egg stage, caterpillar stage, we went to the adult stage and I explained pairings. Now let's go through a few technicalities as I call them.